always yours, sir. Wow, 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 man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. Man, I'm so fired up, so excited. But first, let me give it back to you. Brother, you are by far, well, I'm going to just say you a godsend, not just in my life, but in the lives of so many individuals all around the world. And the whole world don't even know yet. So I'm just so excited about what we have our hands on. It's, it's finally us, y'all. It's finally us. It's been a long time coming for this, but everything happens in not our time, but God's time. And right now, he got his hands all over us, loving on us. So it's only right that I do my due diligence and give that same love and energy back to you guys. So, man, I'm so excited, man. If y'all ready to go, if y'all ready to tap in tonight, make sure you got your pens, your pads. I'm going to give you a few seconds to get all that stuff together. If you have an extra device, tap in on your extra device to be able to follow along with me as I'm going. So I'm gonna give y'all a little few seconds to do that. Tyson Seth is in chat when you're ready. And uh, I'm gonna let this little instrumental that I like ride. We can't hear you, brother. Oh, you can't hear it? Oh, no, sir. I got to hear this. This is a cut. I halfway expected to hear something about yams. No, 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 no. Not today. Not today. <laughs> no, this is a PG rated call, okay? So are yams. <laughs> Sweet potatoes. Happy children all by. Sweet potatoes. Type of sevens in the chat when y'all ready. Type of five, stack something. Let me know y'all ready. Y'all locked and loaded with me. Oh, let's go. Shout out to the queen. This is the upper dark on my She's the king ready to get this sauce. Let's go. Bring your keys. This generational one for real, y'all. I see we got a lot of sevens in the chat, so we're gonna go ahead and pop in. So in true spark fashion. It wouldn't be right if we didn't also watch uh, up some charts. You know, we got to get to the pit. Got to get to the pit. That's why we're here. Go ahead and uh, share my screen right quick. We're going to do it a little, little different, though. We're going to do it a little bit different, right? So what I want to do, go ahead and pause that. All right, cool. So what I want to do, everybody can see my screen? See. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So uh, last class we were talking about, we kind of started talking about top-down analysis, right? So I want to dive a little bit deeper into that topic and really show you guys how to like really, really break that thing down. Because when you're going from a higher time frame, sometimes the translation to those lower time frames, it can get a little, it can get a little tricky. So we're going we to dive into that a little deeper, but what I want to do is spend the first maybe like 30 minutes or so marking up some charts. We're going to still roll with our patented seven steps to Pippin system, and we're going to introduce some new things along the way as we go, because we on a whole little journey now, y'all. So go ahead, y'all let them pairs fly, and we're going we gonna to jump into it, okay? I see UJ first, shout out, shout out. Alex, what's going on? I ain't seen you on the call in a minute. You've been out there traveling with the nurses. I love it. Pleasure to have you back. And again, welcome, welcome, welcome to all the new individuals who decided to get started with us. If you are just tapping in, you don't really know what's going on, hold on, buckle in. We gonna, we finna get on this ride together. So we gonna go ahead and start with UJ. <laughs> So, and this is week 30, FYI. Oh, it's week 30. Perfect. 30, 30. 30, 30. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, if you don't have these steps written down, if you've never seen this strategy that I'm about to go over, make sure you got your pens and pads. I'm going to run through it. I'm going to explain everything as we're doing it. And then we're going to kind of pick up the pace a little bit so that we can get to what I really want to talk about today. Okay. So first things first, make sure that you are on the correct pair and the correct time frame. 
correct pair, correct time frame. That's step one. So we want to be on UJ first, and we want to be on the one hour time frame. Okay. And I'm gonna help y'all out a little bit. Okay. Seven steps to pivot. Y'all know I like to put it on the screen for y'all. Boom. Hit that one. And let's make one more just for the steps. Okay, step one, correct pair and correct time frame. Okay, step two, we want to switch over to the line chart. Okay, we gonna do it at the same time. Okay, line chart, boom. Step three, what do we wanna do on step three? We want to identify the end of the line. What is the end of the line? The end of the line represents current market price. Right? Current market price. End of the line is this bulb. You see how I move my mouse over here? You see how I kind of got that line going all the way across? And if you watch it, you'll see that it kind of pulsates. Okay? That's the end of the line. Okay? Step four. What do we want to do on step four? Step four, we want to identify our swing highs and swing lows. Okay? And I'm going to put in parentheses, we need two of each. Okay? Two of each. Step five, what are we going to do? We are going to switch back to the candlesticks, okay? Switch back to the candlesticks. Step six, we get to be a little artistic. Step six and step seven, we get to be a little artistic, right? So step six, we are going to use a rectangle box and shade in the zones, okay? Step seven, we're going to draw out our frog legs. Uh, and what are the frog legs? The frog legs simply are the visual representation of BRT. What does that mean? Break, retest, trade. Break, retest, trade. Say it again. Break, retest, Trade. We're going to even do it a little bit easier for you. Boom. Take a picture. Put it in your notes. But make sure that you still go back. Don't just take these screenshots that you take because we're going to have a lot of information that we're going to be diving into right over time. So don't just take the screenshots. Actually go back and write that thing down. Put it in a formal book somewhere where you have all your notes nice, clean, organized, so you can literally follow step by step by step. And that's gonna help you track your journey throughout this whole deal as well, okay? So got the screenshot put in there. So we was on step two, well, we switched to the line chart. Step three, we've identified the end of the line, which is this glowing bulb, all right? So we on step four. We wanna what? Identify our swing highs and swing lows, and we need two of each. So the way I wanna do that, I'm gonna just grab me a horizontal line, come to this lowest point I see here. Okay. I like that. And I know it says, you know, swing highs and swing lows, but this is one of those unique situations because right now the market is trapped tightly in this market, also known as consolidation. And consolidation is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing for multiple reasons. The main reason is, is because it's gearing up to make a move, okay? It's gearing up to make a move during that time. Also known as accumulation of price, okay? So I got one zone here. I like this for a support zone. And I like this. This is the most recent high outside of this consolidation, okay? I like this swing high. And 
if y'all have ever been on a class with me back in the day when we made uh um, or when we when i used to really do this me and queen asia bonds you know that i like my hiccups what's a hiccup this is a hiccup notice how the market is moving very very fast down it hits this level gives us a small bounce and then continues to move very very fast again okay y'all see that hope everybody sees that it makes sense okay so the hiccup that's a little added bonus now what are we going to do step number five switch back to our candlesticks Boom. here we go now let me talk a little bit more about this hiccup right look at it again on the line chart Boom. y'all see it now look at it on the candlesticks Boom. what do you see type it in the chat and this should help further explain why I like the hiccups. Nope, not a retest. Mm-hmm. And engulfing candle and order block. Absolutely. Love these things. Why? Because they make the market move. They tell you when the money is coming in, right? So let's move on with step six. Boom, let's go ahead, grab this rectangle box, and we're going to color in our zones. Uh, that one was this one. And now, boom, there we go. So we got this nice little consolidation area right here. Okay. Now, what does step seven say? Oh, okay. I see you in there. Institutional candle. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> and eventually, everybody's going to know the meaning of all these terms because, for the most part, they really mean the same thing. Okay. So the way I do my break retest trade lines is I grab the path, right? Grab the path, and I simply do one click inside the zone. I take it out of the zone. One click, bring it back into the zone. One click, take it out of the zone. Double click to close it, okay? Now I got my frog legs. Everything is good, nice and clean, right? Now, what are we looking for to happen? Well, right now, this market is in this consolidated area, right? And we look in that this top zone as well, and we know that we have this order block that we just discussed, okay? So it's a good chance that this market can kind of do something like this here. It's a good chance of something like that. It's a good chance of something like that. Why do I say it's a good chance of something like that? Well, if I'm looking at this, I notice that we got some good structure right in this area, right? And I notice we got some good structure outside of this thing. And we kind of got some support right here. So the way my eyes work is to me, I see a head and shoulder pattern potentially forming right in our face come up, give us a retest, and that market can drop down. Okay, so kind of see something like that. So everybody with me, but that's not, that's not what we're doing. That's not the strategy. So I do like this area though, right here for that sale. I do like that. I think that's number 30 right there. I think that's going to be number 30 right there. I think that's going to be number 30. Yeah, let's go ahead and call it week 30. Trade setup. Okay. I'm going to move these over because we always want to make sure we're prepared. Slide these over right quick so that y'all can clearly identify what we're talking about. I like this move right here. Okay, set up my entry point. Let's go ahead and set up a little risk reward set up. Okay, now I put on here 30 pips. Now, I can't tell you how much of your money to risk, 
But typically when we do regular major pairs, we recommend a 30 pip stop loss, okay? But depending on your lot size, that may be too much for you. So again, take trades at your own risk, okay? Use proper risk management for your particular accounts, okay? Always, always, always use proper risk management. We can recommend a trade, but it's all in how you execute the trade, the results that you end up with. Because sometimes you can take a winning trade and it turn into a losing trade because you're over leveraged or because you didn't properly manage that trade or that risk. Okay, everybody with me? Yeah, we got a question. Okay, let's go. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, <clears throat> so are you in the blue candle re, um, in golf or the black candle in golf? Because when I look at the blue candle, mm -hmm. I don't see, but I don't want to, you know, be wrong. Okay. Let me let me move in so everybody can see. This blue candle is a candle that is being engulfed by this. Oh, being engulfed. Okay, so yes. am I? Okay, so clarification: when you say engulfing candle, mm -hmm. the engulfing candle is the engulfed, not the engulfer. Right. Okay. Right. So Ooh. if I say, so if I say we got a bullish engulfing, what kind of candles is getting engulfed? The bearish. No. No. I don't wait. Said it. When you say you got a bullish engulfing, the what candle was being engulfed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bearish candle was being engulfed. Yes. Oh no, you just confused me. Think. Okay, so look at it right here. It's on your screen. So my blue candles are my buy candles, right? So what kind of engulfing candle is this? Is this bullish or is this bearish? Say it one more time. The blue candle is engulfed. So what? this candle, hold on, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it plain because somebody else has this question. So I don't I want to clear this up for everybody. That candle right there that I put that arrow on, mm -hmm. that is the engulfed candle. Now, the reason why it's engulfed is because one candle is eating it up, basically. It's it swallows it up. So which candle is longer? The black one. Okay. So being that the black candle is a bearish candle and it's longer, what kind of engulfing candle is it? It's a bearish. Absolutely. It's a bearish. But the bullish candle is being engulfed. Okay. Thank so you. For a bullish engulfing, we potentially have one form in here, but it looks kind of ugly because it's still consolidating. But this bearish candle is smaller than this current blue candle. Would you agree for the moment? Yes. Okay. So if we have this set up here and this blue candle ends up being bigger than this black candle, what kind of engulfing candle would it be? Oh. Bearish. I mean, a bullish. It's a, a bullish. bullish. It's, 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 as long as this blue candle is bigger than this black one. Is gonna be a bullish engulfing candle, but okay. I don't even like that candle because it's got too it's got wicks on both sides. So I really ain't even looking at it because it's in consolidation. But that was just for example. Okay, okay so so one. here's okay. one. Look, y'all see right here. See, we got this little black candle right here. Mm -hmm. We got this big blue candle. Mm -hmm. This is a bullish engulfing candle. Okay. Okay. So I just the opposite of this one. Okay, yeah, because that was that was what I was. I thought the engulfing candle was always the biggest candle. It is, but the blue one is small. On that one, in, in which case, that one. Right. So it's a bearish engulfing candle, and the bearish candle is longer. Okay, I whichever, heard that. Whichever is the longer candle, whichever is the candle that is doing the eating is the candle that you're gonna classify it as. So if the okay. bullish one is bigger, it's a bullish engulfing. If the bearish one is bigger, it's a bearish engulfing. Okay, so because so that is not the engulfing candle, that's the engulfed candle. The blue one is the engulfed candle, yes. 
Okay. Because when you ask the question, you ask what kind of quest, what kind of candle was that? And they said engulfing. And that so that wasn't yeah. engulfing. And the reason, the reason being is because they tend to look at these two candles as like one set up. So they'll just say bearish engulfing candle or bullish engulfing candle, not candles. Mm, okay. Okay. I I just be trying to be specific because I want to learn this. So if it's engulfing, which one is which? And don't hesitate to ask no questions, okay? Oh, I, Please. I'm asking. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm with it. So let me, uh, I'm going to leave this just like this. And am I sending them directly to you, Asia, or am I just dropping them in the chat? Because we have a mixed group of people, you just have to drop them. And I'm still going to put them in Discord. Okay, bet. <clears throat> Boom. So that's the first one. All right, let's uh, go. You. Speak 30. I'm sorry, what you say? Uh, e Estados Unidos. Okay. EU. Got you. Euro USD. Let's get it. Okay. Let's clear this out. And we're going to run through these steps. Okay. So, step one, right pair, right time frame. Okay. Let's hit the little curly Q real quick. Okay. There we go. I always hit this little, I call it the curly Q, but this is the reset chart view. The reason being because I want it to tell me exactly every bit of data that it wants me to know that's happening right now on this time frame okay i want the most extended but close view possible okay so step two switch to the line chart all right step three identify the end of the line okay here's the end of the line step four identify our swing highs and swing lows okay so don't really want to use this one per se because it's like, well, we can technically because it's reacting right now. And if it gives us this good old breakout, uh, we in the game. We in the game. What does that look like, though? What does that look like based on this structure? What does this structure look like to y'all? Inverted head and shoulders. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I like that. We have this resistance point here, but being that it's close and we're potentially getting this breakout right now, I wanna look to the left and see if we have anything higher. And look, we do. When you're marking up the chart, sometimes it's better to err on the side of the more conservative in terms of your markups. So you can kind of, make the best call okay now step number five switch back to our candlesticks mm. now that i look at this y'all i think i want to change that trade because this is happening right now in front of our faces in front of our faces y'all it's happening so let's go ahead complete it that was step six we shaded in our zones draw our frog legs Okay. Um, now, we just talked about this. What kind of candle setup is this? In, uh, no, no, just the candles. What kind of candle setup is this right here that I'm circling? A bearish engulfing. Okay, perfect. Now, what has currently happened that you see? Yeah, it's definitely a bearish engulfing candle, but what is currently happening within the last two hours? A violation, okay? A violation, there we go, perfect. So how do you play a violation? Well, if you get a violation of an institutional-like setup, that's a pretty strong violation. So what you want to do is take the trade in the direction in which it violated. Meaning, this is a bearish candle. By nature, it should push the market down. It pushed the market down a little bit. And then it said, you know what? i just rather go up. So that looks very good. And look at what's happening. The market is literally starting to 
push up off of that level. This is Euro USD. Let's see from the room. Oh yeah, I definitely see 30 pips on that. That's beautiful. So that's a bonus right there. If you like it, it's happening right in your face. Okay. Take trades at your own risk. Here is the chart. The next one is Chef J. Chef J. Let's get it. Okay. And most of uh, what I'm going to be marking up on will be the FXCM broker. Um, just, you know, for the, so you know. Okay. Uh, here we go. Mm, this is a lot of consolidation. Okay, let's let's check it out. Step one is done. Step two, switch to our line chart. Step three, identify the end of the line. Boom. Oh, shout out. Miss Jackie O on deck. What's going on, Queen? How you feeling? Okay, end of the line. Got a swing high here. It's our most recent swing high. Let's see, let me see. We got this little pothole right here that it hasn't quite filled yet. I like that. A lot of this consolidation right now, though. Not feeling all this consolidation. Need to see some action. Okay. Oh, I missed the line. You know what? I'm not going to use this one. This. Let's look and see what it looks like. Nope, that, that was my hiccup right there. I will use this then. I will use it. I don't like it. It's tight. It's in the zone. So we're going to be real patient with this one. Real patient. Step number seven, frog legs. Boom. Double clicked on it too early. All right. There we go. And there is the chart. Okay, what's our next one? U.S. oil. U.S. oil. Yeah, that all. All. That all. That all. Almost sound like you're saying all. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be all. U.S. all. <laughs> okay, what's the first thing we see when we look at this? Hey, Lord. Big old gap. Big old gap. Okay. Well, watch what happens when we switch over to the line chart, no more gap. The gap disappears, okay? But we know it's there. All right, so current market, okay? Nice little, it's at the resistance. Let's see if it's gonna keep pushing. And I like these lows right here. And the reason why I like these lows right here is because it created an engulfing candle, kind of pushed up. And now it's just responding to this resistance, okay? It's just responding to that resistance right there. A little consolidation. Now it's crazy how we marked up a whole point, right? We put it right on the line and the market still peaked out above, still peaked out above, okay? Pay attention to that. Okay, I like I like this setup right here. But I'm gonna do something on this one because we got that gap and the market is like still towards the the upper part of the market. Let's let's go in time frame. Okay. See what this looks like. Okay. 
camera popped up in here, but you still got some stuff to clean up up in there. Okay, I like it. I like it. And the reason why we got this gap like this today is because it was OPEC today. OPEC, this is the, the organization for, for uh, petroleum and oil and all of that. So when they get the meeting and things, it uh you know tends to affect oil heavily and it literally gapped a lot. <laughs> it's like 600 something, looks like close to 585, 585 pips. It gapped and closed. Like that's that's crazy. The gap must fill. The gap must fill. So I really wanted to say be patient. I wouldn't really necessarily look for the buy because we got a, that's a lot of void. And the market don't like these boys. This is a problem for the market. It has to go and rebalance this price action. Has to. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and catch that point there too. Catch that point there too. And the reason being, because this was the last structure point that it broke, retested perfectly. So you could have been in a buy on Friday. I wouldn't have recommended it, but, you know, could have been in a buy on Friday. And when the market opened up on Sunday, jumped into a whole bag. Sheesh. Okay. So let me uh, take this picture, drop it in the chat. Let's go. What we got next? How many more we got also? Man, a thousand. Hey, oh, you. Man. Okay. AU said a thousand. So remember, we looked at AU last week. Remember when I did that markup and we was talking about top-down analysis? Y'all remember this from last week? Kind of pinpointing some areas that we were looking at. Told you the type of reaction I was kind of looking for. Okay. See it on the four hour time frame. Hit this little consolidation area. This is where we were. Market played around a little bit. Gave you a nice little entry for a smooth little 37 pips. Okay. You said, is this for advanced people? No, it's not. It's not. But if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. Okay. So step one, we want to get on the correct pair and the correct time frame. Okay, correct pair, correct time frame. AU, one hour. Now step two, we want to switch over to our line chart. Okay, when we switch over to the line chart, this line chart is to help us identify structure. Okay, so the best way to explain how we need to respond to the market is first we need to track the market. Essentially, that's all we're doing right now is trapping the market, okay? So when I identify the end of the line here and I find that this is the nearest resistance point to the current market, okay, well, we can trap that, okay? Because we want to see where it's going to respond at, right? And um, the way this all this is, this just looks like a little bit of consolidation. So this is just one big zone right here, one big zone. So we color this in. Notice we have a bearish engulfing candle on the top. And this is a little bearish engulfing. It's not even huge, but it is giving a reaction. It is wicking off of that top zone at the current moment. Those wicks could say, hey, maybe I'm tired. Why would I be tired? Well, I ran all day. If you run all day, will you be tired? You're going you're gonna to slow down so you can catch your breath. Okay, so you can catch your breath. That's what's happening right now. The market is catching its breath, but it's still kind of making structure points that may yield a potential reversal. So what we're going to do is just we're going to be patient. We're going to allow the market to come to us. We're going to trap this zone like so. And we're going to say if this market breaks out of the top, look for the retest for the continuation, because what will it be? It will be a violation of this bearish engulfing candle, which should naturally push the market down, okay? 
But look here, it also created a bullish engulfing candle and it's wicking off of the support. So it could continue pushing up. We just got to wait and see. Okay, be patient. The patient trader wins because the impatient trader is impatient. <laughs> so don't be impatient. All right, don't be impatient. Okay, you said we got a lot more. So I wanted to kind of cut. So I'll do one more. And because I kind of want to talk a little bit more about this top down analysis. So did I send that? No, I did not. No, I didn't. Did you get that one? I have it. Okay. Let me one more. And then we're going to. Um, EA. EA. How many have we done so far? Um, this will make six. And there's a total of 15. Okay. Now nah, we can do some more. I didn't realize it was. Yeah, I was I was very much exaggerating with a thousand, but you know, <laughs> yeah. the floodgates popped open as soon as you said drop your bed. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We'll run through them. We'll run through them. Okay, so identify end of the line. Boom. End of the line is there. The market just is real tight right now. Another reason why the market is so tight right now is because. It's NFP week, y'all. It's NFP week. Meaning, for those of you who don't know, NFP stands for non-farm payroll. So that means that it is assessing. Let's just pop over here real quick. Uh, so we got on Wednesday, we got the first little meeting about it. Make it's gonna be some, it's gonna be volatile this week, y'all. It's gonna be very volatile this week. And on Friday, please, if you do not know what you are doing as of right now, if you are just learning, please heed this warning. Do not trade NFP. Just give it first Friday of every month. If you are still learning. Please just be a spectator and watch how the market moves first so you can start to see what I mean when I say it's going to be volatile, right? But the money is where the volatility is. So when you are ready for it and you feel it, know that it's always going to be a risk and it's like a high risk, okay? That's a high risk trading day. So, but with high risk, can yield higher reward, right? So just keep that in mind, all right? But it's going to be a heavy week for news. You got a lot of red folders because it's the beginning of the month, okay? Even tomorrow, we got job opening. So the market's going to be crazy this week, y'all, okay? Absolutely. Identify the extreme highs and lows, okay? Um, Mr. Goldfinger. Yes. Can you make Mr. Bay? No, Cole? no, that's not me. That's somebody. That's somebody else. Somebody lying about who they are? No, that may be somebody. Name may be Akil Bay too. I don't know. <laughs> that ain't me though. That's interesting. I'm hidden wealth society. That's definitely not me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I want to know who that is. <laughs> I do too. Hey, now I want to know so we can pause this. I just uh, Akil Bay. No, just... let's keep it. Let's keep it moving. Okay. Mm. Oh, they, they connect me to the audio, whoever they are. We're going to find out. That's interesting. All right. Well, we're going to keep it moving. Keep it moving. All right. I do like this setup. I do like this setup that EA has. Right. We got a bullish engulfing on the bottom and we got a bearish engulfing on the top. So either way, we should expect a violation of some sort. <laughs> either way. And whichever way it violates, that's the way you take the trade. Okay. Simple enough. Whichever way it violates, you take the trade. All right, what we got next is? It is the crowd favorite. Oh, no, no, it's not. Yes, it is. GU. Okay. 
And somebody has a question. Okay. About so, yeah, that's that's uh, I just changed their name to unknown. That's the Akil Bay. So he had his name. Whoever that is had their name is Akil Bay. But I just typed it unknown until we figure out who it is. We'll put a name in there. Okay. Uh Denise Johnson asks, can you explain violation? Okay. Perfect. Look, we got one on the screen right now. Look at that. Look at look at how God works. He's like always on time, is he not? So look, a violation, right? So this box is marking up this order block. What kind of order block is this? Or what kind of engulfing candle is this, first and foremost? It's bearish. It's a bearish engulfing candle. But I know why y'all saying bullish. Because y'all think I'm pointing to this little small black one first. And you would absolutely be correct. These first two candles are definitely a bullish engulfing candle setup. But why is it not important? Because this third candle came and wiped all of that out, engulfing that whole area. Okay? Because notice how this black candle closed and this blue candle opened in the same place. Okay? So because that happened and then this third candle came and swallowed up that whole thing, this makes this whole setup right here, those, all three of them candles, that makes that a bearish engulfing candle. Okay? So because it's a bearish engulfing candle, what do bears do? What do bears do? As it pertains to the markets, they sell. Absolutely. You don't believe me? Look, market came back right into this area of this bearish engulfing candle setup, and it sold heavily. Sold heavily. How many pips did it sell? I ain't gonna take it from the wicks. Let's just go from the body. That looks like, uh, oh shoot, 117 pips. Sheesh. She did the thing. But to your question, what is a violation? Violation is when the market does something against the nature of what the candle is supposed to do, okay? It showed us here that it's, it did what it's supposed to do. When the market came back 100%, what did it do? It kept going. It broke out, closed above this bearish candle now, okay? Because it closed above this bearish candle, it has now violated this candle right here is the violating candle, okay? So once the market closed above this area, what did it do? The same things our frog legs tell us, breaks, retests, trades. Is that not what happened here? When this market broke above this area, it came back down, it retested this area, and then the market continued to go up. So if you had your order set right there, when you saw that breakout candle take place, boom. You just missed your 30 pips. Does that make sense to everyone? If that makes sense, type some sevens in the chat. I just want to make sure that everybody has a clear understanding of what a violation is, okay? And how to trade them. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. All right, so let's look at this. You had a question, Mark. Okay, let's go. Go ahead, unknown. See, they put their hand down now. Okay, well, if they feel ready to unmute, I'm ready for it, but let's keep it moving. Okay, so we have GU looking quite lovely, right? No, this is definitely a crowd favorite for sure. Okay, so step one, right pair, right time frame. Step two, line chart. Step three, identify the end of the line. This is a 
looking like a nice resistance just area. Hmm. Just waiting just in case. Okay. We got a couple little peaks right here, close. These peaks to me. What letter, what letter do y'all see right there? What kind of letter do y'all see? An M, absolutely. M, M, M. Okay. We got a support level here. And I don't really like this, but we're going to see what it looks like. Oh, no, that's clean. I can go for that. Okay. Market is setting up nice. Market is setting up nice. Just saying. I'm just saying. Ooh, we, I want to see what happens with this. But I got a feeling. Mm, that looks good. That looks good. Say so you do not like that. Why you don't like it, Miss Denise? You don't like it. It's happening in front of your face. It's an M. It should push the market down. It is dropping. Say so go back to the line chart. You can unmute. You can unmute, Miss Denise. Hi. I, I think a lot of it for me is the coloring um, because of my visual challenge. But if I was drawing this up, I would have put my on that low. I would have brought it down. So you would have wanted to use this low? Up uh, The one above it. Yeah, that one and the one above it. So this and this one. Oh, I'm like, I'm out. Like, like you can like see me. My first line that I put like on this middle peak right here. OK, that's the one you're talking about. No, I'm talking about the one right above where you put that line right there. There you right go. Here. Okay. Let's look and see. It's still nice. But what if I told you that if it does this, because it's going to be coming off of a bearish engulfing candle, okay. it could more than likely hit this breaker candle right here. Okay. Break and close, retest, and continue. And drop down. Mm -hmm. So I guess I just would have marked it up differently, but it's definitely dropping. I mean, it, it very well could, you know, um, play around in this area. Like all of this would just be the, the inside of the zone. Here, I'll even mark it up. Let's, okay. let's put it in. Okay. So it could even, it could very well play within this area. And it did kind of break and close above. Mm -hmm. And it's playing around. But we're gonna see. Like I said, right now the market is still consolidating. Right. Still consolidating. But if it does complete this candle with a bullish and go, I mean, excuse me, a bearish and golfing yes. candle. Yes. It's it's I feel it to continue down. Yes. I do. All right, that's a good one for me. Thank you. Miss Smith eggs, do you bar do you do your markups around the same time every day? Um I don't always have time around the same time every day. Um so no. But when I so one okay, so one thing I'll say about that. Identify in your schedule, get you a calendar book, use Google Calendar, use something to set yourself up for trading success okay don't just say okay well i need to trade every day because every day is not a tradable day i just told you about one day out the month that if you're inexperienced you probably shouldn't be trading at all so you don't have to trade every day in order to make money that's first and foremost so look in your schedule family life school life work life all that and identify when you have the time to trade, okay? Because you can literally trade all day if you wanted to because the market's open 24 5, okay? But you don't need to be in the markets 24 5 because the longer you're in the market, the more likely it is to give back 
all your profits and they'd be mad. Okay. So, and I, and, and that brings me to, well, I can't wait to do the three, five, seven system. I can't wait. It's been a minute, bro. It's been a minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I want to talk to Miss Allen. She's new to trading. Okay. Okay. So just know, Miss Allen, just go ahead and stick around. Of course, it may look foreign to you, but when we launch, we're going to have a full academy starting out with the basics. Mr. Mark Goldfinger Fair is going, creating that right now. We're making sure it's top notch and going over every single thing that you need to know from A to Z, starting off with the simplest thing like what is the Forex market, the history of the Forex market, working his way all the way up to you know market geometry and uh um Elliott's waves and it's, it's going to be advanced and yeah, it's going to start off with the basics go yeah. ahead mark okay perfect perfect yes please don't please don't leave we gonna we gonna we on this journey you got a whole month with us right so i bet you you will un, you will understand i bet you all right yeah. what we got next nitra nitra she says Nitra asks a question too. Uh, okay. The candlestick has to close outside of the zone uh, to be considered a breakout, right? Perfect. Yes, absolutely. If it stays inside the zone, like, okay, so look, this top zone, right? Before we move on to the next one, you see how this blue candle threw that wick up there? It threw a wick, but then it came and closed back inside the zone. And then now look at what's happening. Like it kind of started to drop down. Okay. So because it's dropping down, excuse me, it didn't give us a breakout yet. Right. It's still trapped within all of all of the one, two, three, four. These four candles are currently all trapped within this black candle right here. Okay. All trapped in this black candle. And because they trap, it's kind of showing that the bears might, you know, be trying to step into, into the market, you know, to kind of take over. And look, this kind of further adds to the evidence because they made an engulfing candle. So they're trying to pick up some momentum. Okay. So if they can come and get a good retest off of this bearish engulfing candle setup here, then that should definitely yield to further downward movement okay but if the candlestick does not have the fat part or the body outside of your zone it is not a breakout okay i'm sorry what would you say that next pair was gj 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 what we got for gj Thank you, clear. Let's reset the chart. Okay. So let's start line chart. The end of the line. Swing highs and swing lows. Got this little area right here. But I don't, I don't like how much time it kind of hung out right here. GJ is one of those pairs that, those pound pairs, they tend to move big. Okay. They tend to move big. And I'm actually going to come and catch this one. I like that because we got touch on this side and touch on that side. So I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to use this one because we got a lot of little dips right there. I made a nice little W. I like that. Okay. Step number five is to switch back. Step number six is coloring these zones. Perfect. Step number seven, draw our frog legs. Yeah. Boom. Okay. GJ. GJ is definitely ranging. All right. What else we got? Go. Go. Your best friend. My boo thing. Okay. Let's see what you're talking about, babe. Okay. Step one, done. Step two, end of the line. Okay. Step, well, step three, end of the line. Step four, 
It's behind these swing highs and swing lows. That's a good, it's a good zone right there. It's a good zone. And I like this pickup right here. I like that hiccup. What's that hiccup going to be? A bullish engulfing candle. A bullish engulfing candle. So if we get a violation of a bullish engulfing candle, what should we do? Type it in the chat. Yeah, I hear my question. We get a violation of a bullish engulfing candle. Christine what? said nothing. No, so I'm going to have to. It'll sell off. Absolutely. It will sell off. And isn't this what our progress say? Break, retest, trade. If the market breaks and closes below this bullish engulfing candle, break out, retest, trade. Absolutely. That's gold. EJ. EJ. And it's, 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 it's starting to show bearish behavior. I'm just saying. Just saying. Got to pay attention to the behavior of the market. When it changes, you must learn to adapt and make the changes as well. Okay. Line chart. Boom. End of the line. Swing high here. I think I'm gonna grab this one though, because we got a couple of touches right in there. Right in there. Um, another hiccup. Can't make this stuff up. Boom. Boom. And I know I'm kind of clicking through kind of fast, but the more that you do this, the easier it will be to identify these structures and you can be more proficient at picking your zones as well okay thanks oops double click on it okay What we got next? We have E. Oh, we have EA already. So it's only 14 pairs. My apologies. SP 500. SP 500. Okay. Um, reset. Ooh. All this. Okay, so it's still on this little uptrend. It's still on this uptrend. So what are we looking at? Let's look to the left. Let's look to the left. Let's see what's going on. I like that a little better. I like that high a little bit better. And I'm still going to check that out. What is that right at the top? Bearish from Golden Candle. Sheesh. So it's, it's something happening. The bears is setting up. They must know something we don't know yet. The bears is setting up, though. Well, I wish it was the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Um, with double clicking on me, please. There we go. Okay, you just got all the games today. Said so you gotta be fast with the click. 
Okay, oh, there we go. Oops. US 30 is next. US 30. Oh, dirty 30. US 30, same, same kind of deal. All doing the same thing right now. US 30 is a little bit more ahead though. It's the down one every time. Quit playing with me. Get it. Okay, there we go. Any more? Um, yeah, we got UK oil and EJ. I think we did EJ already. I mean EG. My EG. bad. Okay, Euro GBP. Okay. Gotcha. When we get laid, I don't know my G's from my J's. It's all good. It's all good. I ain't gonna tell nobody else. Please don't. <laughs> Even though it's recorded. Okay. So <laughs> right. All right. So uh UK oil did the same big old gap that US oil did. All right. They tend to do the same thing. Why? Because they're affected by the same organization, OPEC. Okay. They did the same thing, they had that little peak out. Okay. This one first. Yep, that was an open meeting, yeah. OPEC meeting all day. UK oil based. And you said Euro GDP, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Euro GDP. Let's see what you got. Ooh, we look at all this. This is all that sideways movement. It's all good though. Let's see what you got. Line chart, end of the line. Got the swing lows there. Swing low here. I like that. I'm gonna clean it up just a bit. I'm gonna catch that. I don't know how I feel about this. Because I know that this is a bullish and golf. I mean, a bearish and golf. So I'm going to wait on that violation. Yeah, I'll wait on that violation. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I do use the higher time frames, but this is a this is a intraday strategy. That's why we use the one hour time frame. But as we dive deeper, this is just something I want to give to everybody. Something that we've always done, as it works, right? And it's simple and easy for everybody to understand. Now, it's one piece that I didn't tell you, and that's how to actually enter this trade, right? So let's talk about that real quick. You know, this is the last one. Let me go ahead and drop it real quick for everybody. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so 
um, how to take the trade. Well, that's going to depend on if you are, whether or not you are an aggressive trader or a conservative trader. Okay. Now the aggressive trader says, yo, I'm cool with, you know, the drawing down, you know, I just want to get into the trade. Right. And we're going to let it ride. Cool. There's nothing wrong with being an aggressive trader. That means you're going to be first to the party, but also know that being an aggressive trader does tend to carry more risk because you are more likely to see more drawdown, okay? The conservative trader says, I don't really like that drawdown. I don't like seeing the red on my screen, so I'm going to be more patient. I want to get the highest or lowest entry point that would yield the least amount of drawdown, okay? So how to take that trade based on that understanding. If you are aggressive, then that means once the market breaks and closes outside of this top line and outside of this bottom line, you are going to go ahead and set your sell limits or buy limits accordingly, okay? You're going to set your sell limit or buy limit accordingly to whichever direction the market breaks out, okay? Now, if you're the aggressive trader, your entry price is whatever your top line is if you're buying it. Or if you are selling, it is whatever the price is for your lowest line. Okay? Aggressives are on the outsides. The conservative traders, your entry point lies on the insides. Okay? Lies on the inside lines. So as you go through and you actually do your setup, you're giving yourself everything that you need to take the trade. You're identifying your, your, your area in which it needs to break out. You have successfully trapped the market, right? So that's the first thing. You got your trap. Then you've identified where the market needs to break out in order to give you uh, the move, right? This is your structure. And you've also given yourself the entry points. Okay. You've also given yourself the entry points for your trade. Okay. And again, use proper risk management. A recommended stop loss with proper risk management is 30 pips for this strategy. If you are trading non pound pairs, okay, if you are trading pound pairs, or indices or anything like that that carries more weight, we recommend a 50 pip stop loss. Okay. So that's the gauge that we're going to use, right? So just hope everybody uh finds or understands that. Say where can I find this recording? Um we will get you those details. Is are you posting everything on your YouTube still for this? Yep. If they go to uh Akil Bay YouTube page, the same thing you're doing is already on that page. So it's already it's already public domain. So you can go there and check it out. But we will put, you know, that information up there. They go Akil Bay. Is your name Akil Bay too, brother? Oh, he's back. Yeah. Yeah, I see Akil, him. His name, his name must be Akil Bay too. Mm-mm. Yeah. All right. Akil Bay. Let's I go. Know. <laughs> okay. So we got all the pairs? Yep. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So what I want to do uh, now, and we ain't going to take long, uh, but we want, I want to talk about this dollar. I want to talk about the dollar. We're going to kind of look at it from a higher perspective, and we're going to break it down real quick, okay? Uh, so I'm going to reset the chart, and this is what we got, and we're on a monthly time frame right now, Okay. We're on the monthly time frame, okay? We're starting down. This is top down, top down analysis. We're gonna revisit this. I see we got a hand raised. Thank you. Somebody can unmute Gabby. Oh, let me, um, I got you, Mr. Neese. Nice. You can unmute Gabby. I did. She muted that. I don't have okay. a question. I didn't mean to uh, raise my hand. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. So 
looking at this, this is the dollar index, right? The DXY. Now, I don't trade this, but I use this as a reference to gauge how I should be taking trades, okay? Especially if you're trading the majors, any of the majors, whether it's AU, EU, GU, UJ, UK, UCHEF, uh, NZD, USD, any of those, if you're trading those, it would be a huge asset and value to you to know what's going on with this index, okay? Because it, it makes the markets move, okay? Now, looking at it on this monthly perspective, right? What do I see? Well, I see that the market made an all-time high back in June, or excuse me, what's that? Uh, July of 2001. Well, not an all-time high, but it made the monthly high that it's sticking at. And there hasn't been anything that has gotten above that level. So let's label it. Um, and we're just gonna call this the monthly high. Okay, simple enough. And from here, the market made its way down. Boom, it hit this low point. Hit this low point, and that's the lowest that it's been since it hit it. Okay, and that actually is the all time low. Okay, so let's label that. Okay, boom. Now, being that we have this high and we have this low, and we got some movement within this framework, right? Now we can kind of gauge as to what kind of things is happening because the overall trend was down, right? So all of this that happened could really be working its way up to do just a big old retest, right? And a retest of what? Okay, well, let's look, okay? So we have this area right here where we got these, these wicks, okay? See this? But what do we see when we look over here to the left? We see that we have this structure right here, okay? What does this structure look like? To me, I see an M. And it just does, does not want to cooperate with me. So I'm going to switch to uh, what am I looking for? Mm. That is my drawing tool. Y'all know where they put the pencil? Oh, there it is, or the brush. There you go. So we got that M, right? Now, what do we notice once that market created this M? Before it got up here, it hadn't retested this breakout candle, right? Hadn't retested this breakout candle. And finally, 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 after years, in September of 22, right? Just a few months back, it came and gave us that retest of this M right, which still is respecting this bearish structure, right? It's also kind of, well, I'm not going to even say kind of, it also is a right shoulder, right? If I was to draw out this head and shoulder pattern, it'll look kind of like a little afflicted, right? Why I say that? Because we got this shoulder here. All of this would be the head, Market dropped down, dropped down, dropped down, dropped down, came all the way back up, hit this point, and it dropped again. Okay. So your shoulders, and I know that's a terrible line. And it's just terrible. Let me uh, see if this will work for me. Those would be your shoulders. And all of this above that line would represent the head, okay? So if we have a regular head and shoulder pattern on a higher time frame, 
for the dollar index, which makes a lot of the markets move, is it safe to say that we should, you know, be bearish on the dollar? Would you agree with that statement? You have a high time frame, right? Remember, we talked about it on Wednesday, last Wednesday. What was we talking about? Parent trend, right? So if the parent trend, the overall trend is higher, or excuse me, um, is, is calling for a certain thing, that should be, at least for me, that's what that would be the type of moves that I'm looking to capitalize off of, right? Because I want to flow in sync with the markets. If you're doing anything other than what the parent trend is telling you to do, you are counter trend trading. Not to say that you can't win with it, but it is more risky. So you have to determine how much risk you are willing to take in your trading journey, right? That's completely up to you because nobody's there with you when you push the button. Our job is not to tell you what to think. It is to teach you how to think, right? Teach you the how. So I'm going to do my best to give you as much why these things are happening so that it'll further highlight how you should react to what the market is doing. If that makes sense for everybody, if everybody's okay with that, type some sevens in the chat so I know y'all with me. Perfect, perfect, right? So we got this higher time frame. We got the monthly high, we got the all-time low, and we got a right shoulder, okay? We got a right shoulder. So where is the market right now, okay? So I noticed that the market come down into this area, okay? What is this? What is this area right here that I just highlighted? Can everybody see that? We've been, we've been kind of talking about them. An order block. Perfect. What kind of order block is this? Bullish. Absolutely. It's a bullish order block. So notice what happened when the market finally came back into this area. What did it do? It created another bullish engulfing candle, okay? But it did what it was supposed to do. When the market came into that area, what did it do? It came down, it took some liquidity. Remember, we talked about that a little bit last Wednesday as well. Came and took some liquidity, it made another bullish engulfing candle. Now, what is it doing? Now, it's technically retesting this new setup is testing the low of this setup again, okay? But notice we still got this, right? So we got two bullish engulfing candle setups relatively close to each other. So if the market is really to push down according to this higher time frame, then we need what to happen? We need a violation of this original bullish engulfing setup, a retest, and then a trade to continue that market down. All right, does that make sense so far for everybody? Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Now, the violation is not necessarily the move that you should be looking for out the gate, okay? Because the market is still showing respect. So as long as the market is respecting the nature of the candlesticks, then what could potentially happen? Well, the market came down. Oops, that's the wrong tool. Okay. So the, actually, let me get this brush. Okay, so the market is coming down, coming down, coming down. The market hit this area. Do a little wig action. It pushed up, 
and it's coming back down for this retest. So if it's going to respect, it's going to push back up, which would make what letter? I know that looks ugly. Let me clean that up a bit. We should see a W. Absolutely. We should see a W. And it's kind of already showing some respect of that second engulfing candle that it made. Everybody seeing how it's showing respect. Now, again, the mark, the month just opened up. So we got a we got 24 days and 22 hours left on this uh in order for this can excuse me, <clears throat> in order for this candlestick to be completed. So a lot can happen in that time, right? So if we have a higher time frame point of interest that we're looking at, and we can kind of pinpoint how we need to approach it from the higher time frame, time, time frame perspective, then that can kind of gauge how we should better navigate the day-to-day. -day. So let's go down to the weekly. <clears throat> right so we're down on the weekly now and notice what we have right here sitting at the bottom of our point of interest area looks like another order block to me same type of deal okay so i'm gonna hide these other boxes for a second Okay, and let's just look at what happened on this weekly time frame. So right now, it is showing all respects. It's showing all respect. We got wick rejection when it created the bullish engulfing candle or the bullish order block. We got a wick rejection with a nice little reaction, nice little pippage off of that level. Sheesh, 1,237 pips. <laughs> Crazy. 1,237 pips. That's, that's nuts. Okay. And it's still closing above, still rejecting off the open of this candle. Okay. And this candle has significance because it's the last down candle before the impulsive move up. Okay. And this impulsive move up broke structure, right? It broke structure. So because this impulsive move broke structure, it is showing a change in character, okay? Because it's showing that change in character, we can potentially expect this market to go ahead and push up, okay? Now, there are some other things that we can look at to help kind of give us some evidence. Like, I'm gonna throw a term at you, imbalance, okay? Remember earlier when I said that the market doesn't like those huge voids of space, okay? The market, I like to say it like this, the market's gonna put some paint where it ain't. So I just identified two, two lines. I'm gonna make them a little different so we can differentiate between the two. Okay, uh-oh, wrong one. There we go. Okay, in this area, what happened? The bears were in complete control. The bulls were nowhere to be found until this candlestick closed. So that means that for a whole week, the bears was running the show aggressively, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? But notice how these other candles are. You know, they kind of tend to go back and forth. You might have a little run here, a little small run. They go back and forth. There is no back and forth right here. That's just, just them. So one one-sided show. So the markets don't really like that. So because the markets don't really like that, they have to go and balance the books, so to speak, okay? They have to balance the books. Because they got to balance the books, it's got to be something 
that makes this market come and get this money or come and clean that money up. It's got to be something. And ladies and gentlemen, those somethings that make the market move are these order blocks or these engulfing candles. Okay. So we're already getting a weekly reaction, you know, and it's still kind of playing around. Right. And it is definitely considered a fair value gap. Absolutely. We got some, we got some scholars on the line. I love it. Right. So it's a good chance that this market, being that it has hit this higher time frame point of interest, the lower in time frame that we go, I bet we're going to start to see more evidence that it wants to create bull a bullish scenario. Right. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope it does. I hope y'all follow me. Okay. I want to say this as cleanly and as plainly so that everyone can understand what I'm saying. Okay. So we're on the weekly. Now let's go down to the daily. Okay. Now let me uh, shrink that a little bit. Okay. Now when we look at this on the daily. This looks very much like one half of what letter? Looks like one half of one letter, actually a little bit more than half of it, a W, exactly. One More than one half of a W. So you see how it's dipping down. So we may it may dip down into this zone, it may. But as long as it doesn't violate this zone, I would like to see the second leg of the W form from this area. So if in fact that does happen, we should see dollar strength moving forward over the next few weeks. We should see dollar strength. And then we should see other things like the majors with the dollar in the second half, like your AUs, your EUs, GUs, so forth and so on, we should see those to do the opposite. So if the dollar is going up, those pairs should drop because it's the secondary pair or the secondary piece of the puzzle. You have primary, you have secondary, okay? The dollar will be the secondary. And if that has strength, that would push those down, okay? And the opposite will be true for UJ. UJ, UK, USHA, those would tend to follow along with the dollar because in those pairs, the dollar is the primary. Okay? Does that make sense for everybody? Hope that makes sense. Does that makes some sense? Type some threes in the chat. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. Now, also still looking on this daily time frame, I see more evidence, more evidence saying that we should get up into this area. Why? Because I see this nice bullish engulfing candle right here that received something. It received a violation, making this big old bearish engulfing candle. Okay, making this big old bearish engulfing candle right here. Now, because that violation took place, what has not yet taken place to this violated candle? What has not taken place that needs to take place? That further says that they got to go clean that money. The, never, the bulls never came back to it. They never retested it. So I'm going to say it to you like this, because the banks don't trade with stop losses. This blue candle right here is a buying candle. And it's in drawdown. That candle is in drawdown, but they can afford it because they make the market move. Right. They said, it's OK, we'll let that one rock, but we still eating off all of this because their original sale orders are up here, starting from this little one right here, all the way at the top. The market makers control the show, okay? 
They control the show. So when you see these candlesticks form on these higher time frames, you know where they put their money at. You know when they're getting into the market. Okay. So they did the same thing here. And they just they instituted this buy candle and then dropped the market on you, right on your head with your money. Right. So what did they leave behind? More imbalance. More imbalance. They got to go and fill this up. They got to balance the books. Okay. What's some more evidence that I see that says that this market should go up? Well, I can't help but to notice that we have some relative equal highs right here. Remember last, last Wednesday, I said that the market likes to target these areas <clears throat> of equal highs and equal lows. Why? Because most retail traders don't see those as take profit areas. They see them as entry points because they see double tops and double bottoms. But have you ever been in a trade where you thought it was going to um, go to your double top and or your double bottom and create that that move, that turnaround move that you was looking for, that she was expecting? Anybody ever been expecting that? And then it blew right through that area only to wick it and then do what you said it was going to do in the first place. The reason being, because they had to get some more money about your purse, right? Their objective is to make money for them, not for you. So it's key to identify where they're hiding at, but they're not even hiding because they have to show their hand. They have to show you what they're going to do before they do it, right? And technical analysis helps us to identify that. So when we, anytime that we pull out these charts, that's what we're doing. We're doing technical analysis to identify certain structure points, support and resistance, different key things that we're gonna go, go over, right? We're gonna learn to help build a case, right? We wanna build a case for our trade. What makes the most sense? Well, the thing that's going to make the most sense is what has the most evidence supporting it, right? It's got the most evidence to support it, okay? Now, I'm, I'm liking where we at right now on this daily, but let's look at the four hour real quick. What do we see? Hmm, we see, uh-oh. Look, y'all, I can't make this stuff up. This candlestick's got an hour and 18 minutes and some chains left, but it literally looks like it wants to engulf this. It's, you know, I don't want to call it too early, but if it continues in this same fashion, that's what it's going to do. And what do we have here? We got a little, we got an order block set up right here. Right, we got a, a nice, what kind of order block? What kind of engulfing candle? Negative or a bearish engulfing candle. Absolutely. So let's identify that because the four hour, that's still a relatively higher time frame, especially for my scalpers. Okay. Especially for my scalpers. So we got a negative or a bearish order block. And look, Engulfing candles tend to make engulfing candles. We have a small engulfing candle right here. Look, it came and retested perfectly. Here, let me put a line on it so y'all can see. It came and retested that area perfectly and dropped down, right? Drop where? Right back to our higher time frame point of interest, okay? And from our higher time frame point of interest that we're already looking at that says that, hey, we should get some kind of bullish uh, movement taking, taking place, right? But you don't wanna just rush, right? Don't rush into the markets. Wait on the evidence that you need, okay? And we're gonna dive deeper into that evidence as we, as we continue, but I, I'm liking what's happening right now. 
like what's happening right now. So let me see if there's anything else that catches my eye on this four hour time frame. I definitely want to make sure that I note this high right here. And the reason being why I want to note that high is because look at the huge reaction that came off of that high. Okay. Why did the market turn right there? Well, because it came and hit this bearish engulfing candle for the retest. Right? Came and hit that thing. Let me see. I think it just hit the wick. It didn't even hit the body. Let me see. What's the high? Yep, it went a little bit higher, but it just got that wick. Didn't, didn't hit the body yet. But it gave a massive reaction and definitely filled all this and bounced up, cleaned all that up. This is a prime example of what I was saying on the other time frame. Let's put a line, let's put our imbalance lines back. Okay, with the dots. All of this area was in balance because only the bears were present in the market. Only the bears. The bulls tried, they failed. Until they build up some momentum, created an engulfing candle, and shot up. Only to fill this imbalance and then drop back down. Okay? Everybody see that? And now we kind of saw on the daily that we had the majority of the W. Now we can see on this time frame that it's starting to take more shape. Is this making sense for everybody? How I'm going from one time frame to the next, further building my case? Perfect, perfect, perfect. These one person. <laughs> no, it's all good. All right. But I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. Okay. So let's go to the one hour. Okay. Go to the one hour. So we got a we got a little order block right here. Hasn't yet been retested. But what do we have that just happened? And I want to I'm going to zoom in because I want to just pay attention to this area here. This is what I'm talking about. What happened right here? Or what is happening? Yeah, we in a fair value gap right now. Change of character. Absolutely, because the market had been working its way down, right? And now what's happening? The market broke that structure, broke that structure. So now what is it doing? Well, it's on its way up to get this next structure. So if we place a line here on this setup, what will we need to see in order to go to the next level. What we need to see to go to the next level. A breakout retest trade. Somebody learning something. This, I'm excited, I'm excited. Up to the next level. So what if you just went on your chart and identified all the engulfing candles. You get your bias from the higher time frame, and you build your case from time frame to time frame. Then, when it comes to your tradable time frames, which are going to be one hour, thirty minute, fifteen minute, some people even do the five, you know, five minute. And you look at those lower time frames for your entry point, so that you can get into the market. Right. But you literally built your case. We we just built a case for the monthly, from the monthly, starting with the monthly, that showed us. And the move that we're looking for right now, even though it's bullish, it's still a retest. Because the parent trend is bearish. Does that make sense? 
and I'm super excited because what we got in the mix, oh my God, that's that's still all, well, almost out of development is our brand new app that's going to call these things out for you <laughs> 24 hours a day and what is it, five and a half days a week. And that's until we get the crypto. When we work out the crypto piece, oh man, it's a game changer because it's- oh, No, crypto, no, no, no. It's crypto, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven days a oh. week, 24 hours a day, every time. Man. All in golf accounts, entry points, exit points, take profits. Come on now. We can't beat it. We can't beat it. But look at what's happening. Look at what's happening right now. I can't make this stuff up. It should give some kind of reaction, though, because it's the first time that it's been up here to touch that. But what if it gives us a break, says, you know what? I don't want to retest right here just yet. I'm going to come and retest this and then give you the break and then retest and then trade. So what if it looked just like this? This takes me back. Uh, remember, remember when we first started looking at US 30 for real, for real on that higher time frame? Yes, sir. Man, that <laughs> had that thing marked up. Well, hey, what you still got that chart that you marked up last week from AU? Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Of course. What if we what if we get something like this right here? Mm. Look. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Decision D been been talking that talking that that good game all call. Who is that? Yeah, I'm checking them out. I'm checking them out. We yeah. happy to have you. Look, man. We, yeah, we absolutely. That's brand. We got people that's brand new all the way to people that know what they doing. Man, I, I like yeah. I, I like that, bro. I you do too. That game on there. Yes, sir. Yeah, like that crypto it. that crypto do have spreads on it. You know, so if you brand new and you you know y'all y'all want to do crypto just know what y'all doing on that crypto before y'all start trading it because it can crack your head wide open real quick just like indices and just like energies and you know just and like metals, metals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and metals because you play hey man that's good wrong that's way. good absolutely brother you know one thing about the crypto i mean the uh, forex market we all are beginners because the market is always you know, changing and nobody know every single thing about the forex market. Well, I haven't met anybody that know everything about the forex market. So yes, uh, I am still a beginner too, and I am a, a student always. A student always. Stay a student. Stay a student of the game, because man, it's always something to learn. It's always something to learn. It's always something to learn. So we got eight more minutes. We made it down to the one hour time frame. Uh, it's gonna be a big week, y'all. It's gonna be a big week. I can't wait to tap back in with y'all on Wednesday. We gonna check out these charts, see what they did. We gonna check out the news too, see what happened in the news that may have led to certain reactions, okay? But look at what's happening in your face. Like I can't make this up right now. It's still showing respect to this bearish engulfing candle is wicked, but you know, hey, we got seven and a half more minutes before the candles close. Please, please, please wait on the candlestick to close because you can make a decision too early and it tap your tail because you pulled the trigger too early. Let it set up, please let it set up okay so with that being said i love y'all i can't wait until wednesday and as we continue further and further on this journey this is just the beginning i'm so excited man i hope y'all are ready because i got a lot planned a lot planned and i just can't wait to see everybody grow and flourish and us uh accomplish more of this 100 to 1,000 seven-figure traders. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time I'm gonna take for this evening. I thank and appreciate y'all for rocking with me. 
Right now, I'm going to pass it back to you, Mr. Akil Bay. Outstanding, 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 outstanding. Go ahead and put some fire in the chat. If you got some value, if you got some value, go ahead and put Goldfinger in the chat. Put Goldfinger in the chat. Mr. Goldfinger in the chat, put it, put it, put it in the chat. Give him a shout out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, right? Mark Goldfinger Fair. Don't forget the junior, JR. Don't forget the junior. <laughs> yeah, you just see the love, man. Yes, 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 yes. I'm, I love I'm, it here. Oh, man, it, this is just the beginning. And don't y'all like being able to have more time than just one hour? You know, just sometimes classes and some places is just one hour and because that's what they're locked into right but here we're gonna take our time you know we're gonna go as long as we want to go sometimes mark may go for three hours i don't know it's all it all depends on the vibe okay it all depends on the vibe okay but listen don't forget don't forget look at all the love brother oh man this is finna be beautiful this is finna be, oh man it's already beautiful don't forget don't forget please don't forget uh, we are in pre-launch. Got to keep on saying this. I'm going to keep on promoting it. Y'all can post this on y'all page too, on y'all social media pages. If y'all see value and you say, hey, hey, man, I, this is this is on point. Uh, man, we are a um, society of individuals that want to learn skill sets, okay? We're a virtual society, okay? And we are going to provide, one is our, flagship product which is trading but we have so much more than trading we have a uh, overall self-development we have health and wellness we have relationships which is travel and we're going to you know have a few other things like that app that we're going to drop to uh very very soon with the platform as well so that you can have that as well and if you want to get started now it's 400 i mean 400 no it's not 400 149 dollars and 95 cent for our pre-launch Okay, this is our pre-launch right here. Okay, if you wait until May 1st, it's going to be this. We charge every 28 days. So if you get started with pre-launch, you're not going to be charged until the end of May. If you start at the beginning of May, you have to pay this. And then at the end of May, you're going to pay this on a monthly basis. But you're going to get everything that we have on a platform. When it comes to all of our pillars, you're going to actually get that and receive that for this amount pre-launch and this amount every month there's nowhere else that's given the value that we're given at the price point we're giving it and there's so much more to come so much more that i can't even talk about right now you know we're going to be running our and this is one thing i'm very very proud of we're going to be running our platform just like a shareholders company so any major decisions before we make any major decisions we're going to give the actual uh, individuals within the society a vote yay or nay and whatever you all vote guess what that's the decision we're going to make do y'all like that being able to have some type of say so in the company that you're participating in that's what societies are about we're not a dictatorship we're going to work together we're going to work together we're going to rock together we're going to make money together we're going to grow together we're going to have fun together we're putting some things in place and order. Make sure to, you know, that you follow all of our social media sites as well. Uh, Sister Keish, if you can go ahead and give out those social media sites so everybody can follow the social media sites and keep abreast on what's going on. Good evening, family. Mr. Goldfinger, powerful, powerful class. I ain't took notes in a minute but I got a whole bunch of pages of notes. So powerful, powerful. Like Mr. Bay said, make sure you follow us on all our social media sites. Um, they are, make sure I have them here. We're on Instagram and it's at at HWell Society. Okay. So I want to be posting in the, in the chat for you as well. Also on LinkedIn, you can find us at Hidden Well Society. Also, we have LinkedIn or well, LinkedIn YouTube is at Hidden Well Society. So basically all of our um, social media handles are Hidden Well Society, and of course, we're on Twitter and also TikTok at Hidden Well Society, okay? And those will be posted um, throughout the platform, so make sure the whole goal is to grow our society, and it's going to take each last one of us to do it, so make sure you follow each and last one of our platforms, and that is all I have, Mr. Bay. Outstanding, outstanding. Give some love for our executive administrator, Sister Keisha Styles. 
Makisha Styles. I'm super, super excited because you know it took it took some time for us to put this together, but it it, it has came together and it's still growing. And uh, now we have our own house, our own platform, our own stage to shine, grow, and celebrate each other. And one last thing, you take this education serious. When we do our event, guess what? We're going to have some nice hardware for you to walk across stage to pick up because we're going to recognize, you know, the individuals in our society to take their education serious. We're not just going to give you a diploma. We're not going to do that, but we're going to give you nice crystalware plats. Uh, so, and, you know, give you the mic for a few minutes to tell your story, because I truly believe that everybody has a most powerful story while they're learning the information and going through the information, applying the information, getting out uh, the information in which they need to take their lives to the next level. So with that said, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're going to hear from Mark Goldfinger. Once again, going over the charts, checking the charts in which he marked up, uh, seeing if, you know, or seeing all the wins we 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 will acquire. And then on top of that, on Friday, you're going to be hearing from uh, a special one of our special calls on Fridays from uh, one of our other educators when it comes to social media. Uh, Mr. Curtis Lee Harbin, uh, TikTok, Curtis Lee Harbin. You can go follow him now as well uh, on TikTok and Instagram. He just got over like three months, he got over 300,000 followers already. And he's going to be teaching individuals how they can take their own business. Uh, you might have a business outside uh, you, that's your own, you right? And you want to learn how to promote it and attract customers on your own business. He's going to show you a few things on Friday when it comes to that. Then on the 27th, we're going to have, you know, one of our other educators, um, which is a health and wellness. That's the health and wellness side. If you have any trauma, uh, she's going to be coming on and uh, Jabrita Sheldon, she's going to be coming on on the 27th. And I'm, I'm going to keep you updated with all of the specialty calls as well. And we're super, super, super excited for each and every one of you all. Uh, and uh, we appreciate all the faces. I saw Jackie O on here. I didn't get to say what up to Jackie O. That was one of our um, seven figure traders. We have created 39 seven figure traders. That was one of our seven figure traders. And uh, I see you. I see you, Nyla. I see you, the indigenous one. That was our last seven figure trader as well that we helped, you know, get to that path. And these individuals are celebrating, you know, uh, traveling the world, having a good time. Right. And um, they're just just definitely enjoying themselves overall and we are super super excited just to see them their faces and to see them coming you know and joining us you know on this journey uh what we what we have been talking about years and years ago four or five years i looked at something on my facebook four or five years ago we was talking about what we're doing today and I, i'm just excited for each and every one of you all so with that said with that said listen y'all have a great rest of the night Y'all have a great rest of the night. And as always, peace, love, and freedom. And if anybody come with that negative sticking thing, and sometimes some people don't even have a bottom. So it's not even that we don't even kick people in the pit. We just leave them there in the pit. Let people stay on that lower level. And we're going to keep on pushing forth. And I'm super, super excited. But as always, this is what. And of course, Hidden Wealth Society.